I think for two reasons, and I'll take that from you know two different angles. From a marketing point of view, stories stick in people's head. And so it's very, very important to lead with a story because people remember stories. Uh, and from a human point of view, I think that, you know, when you go to the doctor, you are sharing a story. When you are talking to a friend or a parent, you're sharing a story. When you go to a coach, you're sharing a story. So everything is about a story. Uh, there's no human without a beautiful message, a beautiful purpose. Uh, there's no human without pain. Uh, it just doesn't exist. And it's really up to us as humans to share that story because um, if you don't share that story, you don't make impact in this world. And so I really, it means nothing when you have money, but you are not fulfilled because you feel like, and I pursued my purpose all the way. I ended up with purpose and no money. And that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to someone who considering making that jump from corporate life to entrepreneur? And what are the pros and cons? they should be aware of. Let's be realistic. Come on, jump and do it. But I think in my case, I'm a bit more realistic. Yes, do it, but also be realistic and, and be real in your approach, right? So this whole journey came at a cost and pursuing purpose comes with a cost. Uh, How can leaders effectively use storytelling to connect with their audience and achieve their goals? Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Canada, from Beirut, into Dubai, Lubna Forzeli. She's a founder and CEO of Stories, TEDx speaker, executive coach, and Coca-Cola alumni. This is just very few words to describe Lubna, and she has a, a big story to share with us today. And please welcome Lubna all the way from Canada. Hi, Lubna. Hi, hi. It's a pleasure to be here. Our our pleasure as well. Uh, so, um, in brief, can you introduce who's Lubna? Yeah, I mean, I'll start with saying that Lubna is a mom, first and foremost. Uh, I think that's, uh, if you strip no, away no, all no, the please. titles, uh, you know, that's one of the titles that I love. And uh, I'm also the, as you mentioned, I'm the CEO and founder of Stories. Um, we help entrepreneurs with their story online and with their inner story, most importantly, uh, because we believe that you perform based on the inner story you have in your head, and this can mm -hmm. be easily shifted. Uh, so, so I love to help entrepreneurs and founders in shifting that story. Um, and I'm a person who basically is very purpose driven and who loves to lead with a story and to uh, live my life with purpose and uh, and with a story, because that's mm -hmm. the only thing that really matters in the end, in my view. Why storytelling? What does it make a difference in your? In well, your... I th yeah, I think for two reasons, and I'll take that from you know two different angles. From a marketing point of view, stories stick in people's head, and so it's very, very important to lead with a story because people remember stories. Uh, and from a human point of view, I think that, you know, when you go to the doctor, you are sharing a story. When you are talking to a friend or a parent, you're sharing a story. When you go to a coach, you're sharing a story. So everything is about a story. Um, and it's that story is basically defined in our head in the way we are raised. And sometimes it's true. And sometimes we believe our own stories and this can be shifted because, you just perform based on the belief that you have about yourself, but that can easily be shifted. Uh, so, about, so that's why I believe yeah. in stories. Talking about believing in stories, do you think every one of us has a unique uh, story, just like an identity, or yes. can be it can be common? No, I think, you know, listen, we each come into this world with our fingerprint. You know, my logo has the fingerprint on it because I really think that we're all here for a reason. We're all here for a purpose and we're all here on a journey with a story. Uh, a lot of people don't share their story. 
And our story is made up of many, many, many stories. You know, you just have to connect the dots backwards in your life to uh, come up with that big story. But that big story is made up of many little stories and many little defining moments that shape us throughout our life. So there is no human that does not have a story. It just doesn't exist. Uh, there's no human without a beautiful message, a beautiful purpose. Uh, there's no human without pain. Uh, it just doesn't exist. And it's really up to us as humans to share that story because um, if you don't share that story, you don't make impact in this world. And so I really believe in in not only having a story, but more importantly, sharing that story. Here's a big shift. <laughs> you are the founder, CEO of Story. So my question is, how did you discover the intersection of purpose and profit in your business? Could you elaborate on the importance of aligning these two aspects, how it has contributed into your own success? Yeah, so I'll share maybe through a story also. Uh, uh -huh. Interesting, nice. Uh, uh, since our company is called Stories, I like to share a lot of stories. And so I uh, started my life in the corporate sector uh, and I had such a beautiful journey in the corporate world. Uh, I grew a lot, I learned a lot. But at one point, um, while I was working in a company and I was quite well paid actually, I noticed that I had the profit, but not the purpose. And that felt miserable. It felt like I was in a prison. Um, it means nothing when you have money, but you are not fulfilled because you feel like you are just simply living in a prison uh, and you're not enjoying life and you're not making a contribution to the world and you're not dreaming and you're not leaving anything behind. And so I left the corporate world and I pursued my purpose. Uh, and I said, you know, there was a defining moment that I went through. And I said, from that moment forward, I will wake up every day and live with purpose no matter what it costs me. And so I did that. But then when I did that and I pursued my purpose all the way, I ended up with purpose and no money. And that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to end up with purpose and no money because a lot of people actually you know, say, I want to jump and I want to just go and be my own boss and be an entrepreneur and do my own thing. And then you end up doing that, but then you don't end up making money. And that feels even worse, right? Because then you, you feel fulfilled, but you can't do anything with that fulfillment because you're not um, scaling that fulfillment and you're not making money of that fulfillment. And so that felt really bad. And so for me, I think the most important thing is actually balancing purpose and profit. It's 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 not one or the other. They have to come together because it's really, really important. And your relationship with money is also very, very important. I didn't always have the right relationship with money. Uh, it, it was always a love-hate relationship for me. Uh, and I think that comes from my conditioning in my life. But, you know, having that right relationship with money, because at the end of the day, it's almost like an energy flow. Uh, yeah. is, is really and important just... so that you can have a, you know, a successful business um, and so that you can do that in a way where you're fulfilled as well. Let's dig more into this. Like many individuals dream about starting their own business, but they are hesitant to take that jump, just like you said. What advice would you give to someone who considering making that jump from corporate life to entrepreneur? And what are the pros and cons they should be aware of. Let's be realistic. Not yeah. everyone is made to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I like that. So, so I think the first advice I have is to know why you're doing it. Like really, really understand why you're doing it. So when you dig deep and ask people, why are you doing this? Some are doing it because they have a deep hunger for fulfillment and for changing the world and pursuing their dream. And that's all great. Other people are doing it because they want to be their own boss. The reality is you're not going to be your own boss because your client is going to be your boss. Your investor is going to be your boss. And while you don't have a line manager, these people end up being your bosses indirectly. Mm -hmm. um, some people want to do it because they want the freedom. They don't want to work nine to five. And that's all good. But then you end up working nine to nine, if not nine to 12. And so you also need to be realistic about the reason why you're doing it and understand 
you know, is that is that really true? Talk to other people who have done it before. Is it really true I'm not going to have a boss? Is it really true that I'm not going to do a nine to five? Is it really true I'm going to make so much money by just being an entrepreneur? So I just think it's important to be realistic. And I think it's important to jump with the parachute on with your parachute with you, because, um, you know, maybe start by trying out your idea beside you know, in addition to your work, have a side hustle, try your idea, see if, you know, there is money in it, see if it's working, see how you feel while you're doing it uh, before you actually do a 100% jump. I didn't do that. I, I jumped without a parachute. I just... I was pushed. <laughs> no, I just, I just like, I was, I remember I was 39, I was approaching 40. Um, and uh, I watched a movie and the movie um, was called The Shift actually, The Shift by oh. Wayne Dyer and you'll find that on YouTube. And in the movie, um, there was a line that said, don't die with your music in you. And I saw that line and I kept playing it on repeat, don't die with your music in you, don't die with your music in you. And I, had a fear of death. I came from a war zone from Beirut. I was raised in a war zone and I'd see people die in front of me all the time. And I was like, if God gave me life today, what am I going to do with that life? And I'm not going to leave anything inside me and not do it. I want to pursue all my dreams, anything that I feel like doing, I want to do it. And so I was watching this clip on repeat as I would walk every morning. I used to walk every day and I would watch that every day and think, okay, I'm just gonna, I have three things I wanna do before I'm 39. These are at the time, that was at the time. Uh, these were uh, start a company, start my own thing and pursue my dreams and call it stories. I, I, I was very clear on my vision of wanting to call it stories. I wanted to have my, I was pregnant and I wanted to have my third child in Dubai specifically. And I wanted to have my third child on my exact birthday. Like I had that in my head. Like I wanted to manifest having my child on my birthday in Dubai with the company that's registered. So I just set out to make it happen. And I'm just going to make that happen. And I made it happen. And on my birthday, I had a C-section uh, and uh, I was in Dubai and I had a company registered called Stories. And yeah, that was really my, my deep faith. <laughs> Way to go. Amazing! It's like you achieve, but I'm I'm sure you 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 set up a new new goal for yourself. Oh, I'm always like this. I always, you know, uh, have these things in me, and I don't leave anything in me. I I, uh, you know, I believe that if there is something that I really want to do, I just do it. Um, now it comes at a cost. Let's be clear, <laughs> because mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not, you know, a, I, I, I love, yeah, I love people like Gary Vaynerchuk who keep telling people, come on, jump and do it. But I think in my case, I'm a bit more realistic. Yes, do it, but also be realistic and, and be real in your approach, right? So this whole journey came at a cost and pursuing purpose comes with a cost. Uh, and I think people need to be aware of that and, and uh, they need to know that if they pursue their purpose, there may come a day where they're working 15 hours a day. There may come a day when they're not making any money. Like most entrepreneurs used to sleep in their garage and not make any money for a while. So this may happen. There may come a day mm -hmm. where, you know, you're not your own boss. So all of these things happen and people need to be aware of them. Okay. I'm, I'm so into stories, just like you. So in your experience, uh, working with leaders and coaching them, uh, develop their inner and online stories. What are the most common misconceptions about storytelling and using it in the business world? How can leaders effectively use storytelling to connect with their audience and achieve their goals? The biggest misconception I saw, uh, if we're talking from, from a marketing point of view, is that uh, they don't convert they don't convert fast from stories. And I think leaders are after that quick conversion. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, we live in an age and time where everything needs to be done now, 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 and we want the conversion now, and we measure the conversion right away. 
uh, and it's all about the click and, and 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 the conversion that you get from that click. And that's not how storytelling works, right? Uh, mm. Storytelling is about building a brand. It's about building a legacy. It's about standing for something. You need to stand for something in this world. You're here, you're alive, stand for something. And that doesn't come with conversion. It doesn't like, you don't see immediate conversion from that. This takes time. This takes consistency. This takes effort. Um, and and you just need to allow space and time for that to happen, in my view. Okay, you you are also uh, active for the women leadership positions and um, as an advocate for that woman in leadership position, what are the some of the challenges you have observed that women face in in this region in particular? And how can organizations or individuals uh, work towards creating more inclusive and diverse leadership environment? Can we see top leaders in the coming future um, of women in this region? So the biggest challenge that I've observed, uh, I think uh, myself as a coach, I'm talking as a, as a coach now, is work-life balance. Um, I think it's it's hard, especially if you have a family, to grow, to be an entrepreneur, or to grow up the ladder in a corporate world when you have a family. Um, and I see a lot of clients who struggle with that balance. Um, and I think you know my view on balance is it's never fifty fifty. It's never a balance. So that whole concept and word is off in the first place. You know. There are times when I'm like today, I'm 200% dedicated to my parents who need me because they're not well, they need me. There is no balance. My kids don't have my time. My husband doesn't have my time. My business doesn't have my time. Right now I'm dedicated to my parents. And there are other times when I'm like 100% on the business and I don't have time for anything else. And there are times when I'm 100% present with my kids and not present for anything else. And so you're constantly juggling, but that balance is never a balance. That concept doesn't, you know, for me, doesn't really resonate very well. Um, I, I do think in living in harmony rather than balance, right? For me, it's all about harmony, how you harmonize all of these different aspects of your life um, in a way that is that works for you as a human being. And uh, again, how do uh, being being a, a woman is more challenging. It's like you are raising the kids. You are there for your parents. You are there to support your husband. You are there to help or uh, be a partner in bringing food to the table. You are everywhere. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. But I think, you know, we have it in us. To, to do all of that. And I think, you know, multitasking comes natural for us. Um, and, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, if a woman really wants to do something, a woman will really do something. And I think while it's very important for companies and leaders to be inclusive and to support women, and, and I'm all for that, but as a woman, I think it's up to you to to do that it's up to you to craft your own path and to go after it and to get it done and i think when people see that in you and when they see that energy nothing can stop you um so so i think you know you define your own your own life and and, and yes while it's important to have inclusive cultures and while it's important for companies to do things to accommodate women it's also up to the woman herself to step up because sometimes the woman limits herself. Um, so at the end of the day, it's really up to us. And and if you want it, you just go make it happen. Good enough. Yes. Are you happy? <laughs> Am I happy? Some days I'm happy. Some days I'm sad. Some days I'm surprised. Some days I'm anxious. Some days I'm peaceful. And that's life. This, you know, this... Uh, this need to be happy all the time, what is that? There's no point in that. It's fake. Right. Stop the fakeness, guys. It's like life is a color palette. It's from black to white and everything in between, blue and red and green. 
And so there are days when I'm happy and days when I'm sad and days when I'm um, I'm in turmoil and days when I'm peaceful. And, and that's part of the human experience. And in my training, I, I trained with a gentleman called Gabor Mate, the best, best experience in my entire life of all of the certificates and degrees that I have. I have nine. And he was by far the best one. And Gabor really taught us a lot to just sit with our feelings, whatever that feeling is, the happiness, the sadness, the surprise, the uh, the excitement, uh, the joy, just experience every feeling fully, experience it in every moment. So this idea of striving for happiness. I believe in one thing, I'm I don't not... know if you agree. It's like you enjoy food when you are hungry the most. You enjoy the smile when it comes directly after the deep side. You enjoy things that happens directly after the complete opposite. So happiness, if it is continuous, it will not be happiness, right? There has to be a moment when you are fully down and then out of nowhere, there, this smile comes out from nowhere and then gives you that pleasure of, let's say, screaming high or, I don't know, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I agree. And I think two feelings can coexist at the same time, you know, in in the same moment, you can be happy for something and sad for something else. We are human beings who have feelings, who have emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to embrace these feelings and emotions. And, and, and there is no human being who is always happy. It doesn't exist. There is, yeah. uh, if there is so, something well, that actually, is, sorry. Let's let's answer some message to those who are really behind, always running behind their happiness, and they are just like keep jumping from position to another, from a, a, a place to another, from entrepreneur into corporate and the vice versa. They're always looking for happiness, and it's not there. What can we say? Uh, what advice can we tell for those people? I think. I think those people who jump from one place to the next are looking for fulfillment more than happiness. That has been my experience personally. Um, but if they're looking for happiness, by shifting things, you're not going to get happy because you're just going to repeat the same pattern over and over. Um, it's better to actually stay where you are and work on the issue that you're having and resolve it and then after you've resolved it, if you want to make the jump, make the jump, but don't make the jump for the wrong reason. A lot of people want to leave their workplaces, for example, because they don't like their boss and they want to go to a new place because it's a new environment with a new boss. Well, maybe you should just stick around and learn how to deal with that boss because actually when you have a conflict with another person, it has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with the fact that you're being triggered by that other person and you need to be curious about that trigger why are you triggered by that person what is it that they're doing that is bothering you and what is the belief you have about yourself that is causing you to be in so much turmoil and how can you overcome that and change that and then after you resolve that if you still want to move move but don't move because you want to escape that bad boss because you're always going to get another one it's never, and if it's not another bad boss. Sometimes it's, it's you, bad. you're a bad boss to yourself. You just keep pushing yeah, and sometimes. putting yourself in the stress and all that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Okay, Here, here's the thing. When you go to the social media or open a book or any any blog or there, uh, they all say, hey, uh, the first success, the first step to success is to get out of your comfort zone. Is this? Completely true, but um, I have to get out of comfort zone, no matter what. Or when should I decide that, yeah, why, why should I do that? I, I'm happy where I am. But I think if you're happy where you are, then stay where you are. There are no shoulds in, world, in this world. Like, I don't believe in, you know, should. I believe in, like, if that's where you're happy and everybody is striving for that happiness or that fulfillment, then stay where you are. Should you go out of your comfort zone? I mean, I think it's healthy every once in a while to go out of your comfort zone and to have what I call a growth mindset. 
um, because that, that's where you you learn, you grow, you experience new things in life. Uh, when mm. you are in your comfort zone, um, and I've been in my comfort zone, um, it feels like you're not growing and you feel like icky inside. You feel like you're not, you know, being fulfilled and you're not growing. But I think there's also a lot of wisdom in your comfort zone and there's a lot of wisdom in boredom. You know, they say, because I'm a mom, they say, if you want kids to be innovative, you have to let them be bored because when they're bored and their mind is still and they have nothing to do, that's when they're forced to be with themselves and to like themselves and to think by themselves. So I think, you know, being still and being in your comfort zone is okay, um, as long as you learn from the wisdom that comes with it. And also getting out of your comfort zone and, and pushing yourself every once in a while and having that growth mindset is also very, very important. It just depends on what your natural tendency is. I'm I'm one of these people who likes to be in a growth mindset zone most of the time, but every person so is let different. Me, let me get it right. It's like you're saying, yes, jump every once in a while, but keep a pair of parachutes in your back, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have I, this question though. Uh, let's yeah. go back to, to look now. If you go back in time and meet your own younger version of yourself, what would you tell that 18 years old girl? Uh, 18 or 8, it depends. 18. 18. <laughs> Ask it's like, that because, uh, you know... skip the school, school life. It's now you're standing by your own when you're 18. What would I say? I was in a very good place at 18. And that's why I ask eight or 18. Uh, I wasn't in the same place when I was eight. Uh, so 18, I felt like I could conquer the world at 18. I was full of energy, full of life. I wanted to do a lot of impact in this world. I was, you know, I at 18, I was touring the world while studying. So I was, I think, in a good place when I was 18. Yeah. So the best thing I would say to myself at 18 mm. is just keep doing what you're doing. Now the eight-year-old sure. version of me is different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we do we uh, have to knock that door of eight? Yes. Yeah, so I think you know. I saw a quote once that I'll share with you. It said, "The only two people you need to make proud in your life are your eight-year-old version of you and your eighty-year-old version of you," mm. because. That inner child who's eight years old is is really, really important because that defines how you live. And that 80 year old version of you is also very important because that's when you're, you know, planning the last chapter of your life, right? So what matters really matters in that last chapter. And so when I was eight, I remember um, very distinctly, there was a book uh, that I read called The Catcher in the Rye. And I remember in that book, um, because I grew up in a war zone, I always had this need in me to always like want to save other people and help other people. And I remember in that book, there was a line that said, you know, before you go and help other people, help yourself. And that really changed, changed my perception and stayed with me. And I really believe that if you want to change the world, you have to start by changing yourself. Beautiful. So change is going to happen. It's going to happen no matter what. We better just adapt to it, embrace it, and proceed. Rather just like been hit with a very sudden change coming out of nowhere and don't have a clue what to do next. You have to be like open-minded to accept and adapt to that situation. Right. Right. Okay, concluding this, uh, it's like the time just... <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? What kind of leaving this interview with a message like what? Telling the world. Yeah, so the message that I always share with everyone is to really do your best in this world to live with purpose. Uh, you are here for a reason. And every day you are breathing. Uh, it's important to find that reason and to live that reason. And to remember that, you know, what I said in my TED talk, which is at the end of the day, 
everything is replaceable. Like your clothes are replaceable, money is replaceable, your job is replaceable, your house is replaceable, everything is replaceable, um, except really that purpose that you live by every day and that story that you leave behind. And so do your best if you can uh, to, to live with that beautiful story that you want to leave behind and uh, and get help along the way you know i personally have had help along the journey i've had communities helping me i've had people helping me i've had mentors i've had coaches i've had a therapist so i think it's really important to have all of that uh because um it really will define how you perform and it will make a shift in how you perform and our goal in life is to come back to our wholeness. We are born into this world as a baby, as a whole human being. Without complex beliefs, without problems, without anything, we're born as whole people. And then society starts changing us. And our parents start putting these beliefs in our head. And I think our job in this world is to come back to our core, to our purpose, to our wholeness, and to live with that. So I invite everybody to do that. Amazing. Thank you very much, Lubna. Ladies and gentlemen, that was an amazing interview. Actually, I was looking up forward to this call. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, stay tuned with me and watch it every Monday. You'll find it there in Monday Talks. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you very much, Lubna. Thank you. Bye-bye.